All right, so the first thing I want to say is about Foursquare. The founders um, created Foursquare as an easy way to explore your city. So they had a fundamental shift in the way they were thinking about social networks, that it wasn't about sitting at your computer, but it was about getting out into the world and actually experiencing social interactions with other people. So what's a location-based service? Wikipedia calls it an information or entertainment service that uses the geographical position of a mobile device. So that looks like anything from Ushahidi, which helps in crisis people map out where there might be an injured person, where there might be a fire. You can tell um, groups of people where they're most needed in a crisis. It might also look like um, exchanging business cards. So there's a, an iPhone app where you take your iPhone and you get it near someone else's iPhone and just getting it near someone else's iPhone exchanges business cards with them, digital business cards. Um, I'm going to speak mostly about Foursquare today, and that's um, what's called a check-in service. So there's also a million different ways to check in, not quite a million. Um, everything from touching your phone and using your phone's GPS. Other times, uh, your phone will automatically recognize uh, the GPS of that, of that location and check you in someplace. There's audio signals, so there's an iPhone app um, called Into Now. You hold your iPhone up to your TV, and it reads the audio signature of that TV show and can tell you what you're listening to and what you're watching. Um, you can, like I mentioned before, bump your phone with another phone and exchange information that way. Um, there's also, uh, we just talked about QR codes. You can snap a picture of a QR code and check in via that way. So there's lots of different opportunities for um, how to check in using a location-based service. Who uses location-based services? It's only about 4% of the internet population. So it's a pretty small group of people who are actually doing this. But I want to point out um, a few kind of outliers. Men are about twice as likely to use location-based services as women. Um, Non-white audiences, uh, both black and Hispanic audiences, are overrepresented using um, location-based services. So they're more likely than the general internet population to be using these services. Um, and most of the people using it are under the age of 29. Why do people use location-based services? Um, this is, they say mainly to get informed and to meet up with their friends. And the big value they see in using these location-based services is for the deals and promotions, the discounts that retailers are giving people for checking in. So checking in is just one part of Foursquare. And if you haven't used it before, I want to show you a couple screenshots just so you get an idea of what the app looks like. So I take out my mobile phone, I open up Foursquare, and I see a list of locations near me. I decide on the location that I'm going to check into or the, the place I'm going to go to. And so I see what the venue is. This is the Brooklyn Museum near where I live uh, in Brooklyn. I notice the Brooklyn Museum has a special going on. So there's some sort of discount there. Um, I get to the page where I'm actually going to check in. And I have an opportunity to share that check-in on Facebook and Twitter. Foursquare says about 20% of check-ins are shared socially on either Facebook or Twitter. Once I check in, I'm rewarded for checking in with digital points. These points don't get me anything, right? So it's just a motivating factor. The only thing it gets me is it puts me on a leaderboard. So you can see here, I was number 12 on my leaderboard. Of all my friends using Foursquare, I was number 12. Every time I earn more points, I go higher up on that leaderboard. And it resets every day. So it's a sort of constant motivating factor um, to continue checking into these locations. But check-ins just allow everything else that's cool about Foursquare to start happening. So it's not about checking in, right? There's not a lot of value for me just keeping a record of where I've been until Foursquare and other applications start using that information to make things better about that experience. So if I don't know where I want to go, I can check Foursquare and say, hmm, I'm interested in an arts and entertainment experience somewhere near me. So I might press that little button with a ticket that says A&E. It's going to show me a list of all the different arts and entertainment venues around me. It's going to start recommending which venues I should go to based on my previous check-ins, based on my friends' check-ins, and based on popular locations on Foursquare. So Foursquare has enough data to know that people who like going to Brazilian restaurants might also like um, Indian dance performances. Because they have so many data points, they can start making really smart recommendations for where you should go, where you should check out, based on what you've done previously and based on your friends. Foursquare also um, allows other users to leave tips about a venue for you. So brands can do this. Arts organizations can do this. My friends can do this. Anyone can leave um, tips anywhere. So the History Channel has been one of the um, sort of greatest users of this tips feature. 
So if I check in, say, at a coffee shop in downtown Chicago, and the History Channel has tagged some nearby venue, when I check in at the coffee shop, it might say, that's great that you're checking in at this coffee shop. History Channel recommends this theater three blocks down. You should go check it out if you're in Chicago and you don't have anything to do tonight. So it allows you to kind of link together in the physical world locations that are nearby. Foursquare also notifies me when my friends are out and about doing something cool that I might be interested in. <laughs> so if they check into a bar that's maybe down the road, Foursquare is going to send me a little message on my phone that says, hey, Johnny's at this bar down the street. Do you want to go join him? It's a nice sort of uh, serendipitous interaction is what Foursquare calls Don't that. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just having a drink. Um, so it turns out most of the social networking on Foursquare happens between users. There's not a lot of interaction between the venue owner, the arts organization itself that sort of owns that venue, and the user. There's really three big things that an arts organization could do on Foursquare. The first is just checking the analytics of that venue. So Foursquare is going to tell you what's the gender of the people checking in, their ages, what times of the day, days of the week. And these are sort of interesting. So Foursquare often refers to this as Google Analytics in real life. They can consider offering a special. So you can offer discounts. You can reward loyalty at your venue. If someone checks in three times, you can give them a discount. If people check in with four of their friends, you can give them a discount. Um, if people check in the first time, they get a discount. Uh, lots of different opportunities for um, discounts and specials. And finally, they, they can link Foursquare to their Facebook page. They can put a sort of in, uh, in real world window cling in their, in their doorway. Um, and that's really the, the kind of core experience. But Foursquare allows you, um, the Foursquare data allows you to do some pretty interesting things. And I'm going to get into those case studies in just a moment. First, I wanted to share um, a study of 76 nonprofit regional theaters scattered all over the US. These are kind of mid sized theaters, a million and above, um, tracking them for the past year and a half and what their engagement has been on Foursquare. So, one of the first things to note is that anyone can add a Foursquare venue. So, if you're an arts organization and you've never been on Foursquare, it's highly likely that one of your users, one of your audience members, has added your venue to Foursquare without you even knowing it. People are checking in, they're getting rewarded with those points that I mentioned earlier, they're becoming the mayor of your venue by checking in more than any other user. Um, so you can see here that only a third of venues have been claimed by their staff, but all but one of the venues has a mayor. So all but one of those venues have enough people checking in and enough sort of competition going on that someone has been declared the mayor of that venue. There's also um, tips at a, um, just over, let's see, 50%, no, over 80%. Um, of venues have a tip. And I, looking at those tips, it's often things like, the best parking spot is two blocks away at XYZ. Or the ladies' bathroom on the second floor during intermission is like abandoned, go there. <laughs> or they have this really great drink special going on this week, you should check it out. So these are tips that uh, users are leaving for other users at your venue without you sort of knowing it. It's a lot of sort of peer-to-peer -peer interaction. An average venue's level of activity, so we're looking at um, the blue and the orange are both the unique number of people checking in, and the green and the red are the number of check-ins. So every time an individual user comes to your venue, they're going to check in. So um, check-ins are always going to be higher than uniques. So you can see that um, claimed venues have three times more activity. So it may be that the venue owners claimed the venue because they were seeing so much activity, but I do think once you claim your venue, and it's just basically a click of a button on Foursquare, then that allows you to have some better data. It allows you to interact a little bit more with your users, and users are encouraged to check in more at your venues once you've claimed it, because they can see that you've claimed it. Venues with specials have a little bit more unique visitors, but not a lot. And I'm going to show you a graph that specials so far don't seem to be a motivating factor for people to check in. Just because you offer a special doesn't mean the crowds will come a run in. So these are all 76 theaters from um, January 2010 till April uh, 2011. And this is their sort of growth of their check-ins over that time. And you can see that one orange line goes way off the charts. And I had to um, sort of cut it off there. Otherwise, you can't see the, the differences among these other theaters. So these are all the venues offering specials. They're sort of across the board. Just because you offer a special doesn't mean people are checking in. 
but it turns out the History Channel, <laughs> that does seem to be driving a lot of check-ins. So those tips that the History Channel has placed in theaters kind of across the country selectively seems to be encouraging people to check in at those venues. Alternately, it may be the History Channel just identified a bunch of theaters that were doing really well that people were checking into and decided to leave tips there. It's sort of unclear the directionality of where that's going. And finally, early venues have more check-ins. So um, the Foursquare numbered its venues chronologically. And the earlier, the lower the number of the venue ID, the earlier it came online. And so what we're seeing is that early venues have much more check-ins. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> and, um, and so it's just gonna take time for this to kind of roll out um, and, and get, uh, go across the US and sort of spread in, in popularity. And I have really quick case studies I'm gonna fly through because um, I think I'm running out of time here. So if you're um, an art service organization that doesn't have your own venue, like TKTS, which sells discounted tickets to Broadway theaters, you can leave tips at other people's venues. So TKTS goes to these Broadway theaters, leaves a tip about that venue, and promotes those venues to anyone following the TKTS account. If you have temporary venues, like a film festival, so the Tribeca Film Festival this year created a temporary venue at each of the theaters who had their own owners, and so they just created a new venue sort of on top of the other venues called Tribeca Fest at Clearview Cinemas Chelsea, for example, and they can run their own specials even though they don't own that physical location. They're also promoting the use of Foursquare on their website and calling it attention um, to their users. You can do treasure hunt. So this is a gallery that left um, print, prints of the um, current artwork all across the city and they would check in to where those prints were located and sort of and whichever of their users showed up first got to keep that print. So it was a way to sort of engage their audience in a scavenger hunt all over the city. The Brooklyn Museum is using Foursquare's API, which is a kind of data stream of all Foursquare check-ins. And so they have this section of their website that highlights everyone who's checked in at their venue before, all the tips that they've left, um, all the people who've been mayors. So they really are sort of engaging um, all of their users. When should I visit? There was a culture hack day that happened in London um, in January of this year where a bunch of programmers got together with a bunch of arts organizations and hacked together a bunch of really cool apps. And this is one that came out that was tracking um, when visitors were visiting very popular museums. And it's a recommendation service that says, if you wanna go to the museum when no one else is there, go on Wednesdays. And this is constantly updated in real time that sort of tells you who's at the, mu not who's at the museum, but how many people are at the museum, what times of the day they're going, and allows you to kind of adjust your own schedule based on other people's check-ins. The check-in that anticipates what you need to know, so if you sign in with Foursquare Transit, Every time I check in at a location, it's gonna tell me the nearest train station and when the next train is. We can imagine, I think, an idea where I check in the location and it tells me the nearest arts organization and when their next open production is or how much those tickets are. There's a lot, but a lot of opportunities um, to anticipate what users need to know based on their location. Gatsby is another app that recommends who you should talk to who, who also has checked in at that venue. So imagine I walk into a theater and Gatsby tells me, there's three other people who are similar to you in some way, who share your interest. This is their seat number. Go find them and strike up a conversation. <laughs> the check-in that re recommends how to get healthy. So Foursquare isn't just about physical locations, but also about activity. They partnered up with an organization called RunKeeper, and RunKeeper helps you track running marathons and preparing for marathons. So every time you run, you get rewarded for checking in to a location that's sort of constantly on the move. So we can imagine ways that arts organizations could create some of this gamification um, and reward users for going to see different kinds of arts events. And finally, uh, or almost finally, uh, Foursquare partnered up with American Express to uh, um, allow you to pay for things as you check in. So you go to a retailer, you say, I'm checking at this location, and you automatically get $5 off of your American Express bill just for checking in. So it's a way to sort of tie very directly coupons um, into your check-in. And finally, there's a way to ch a check-in that triggers unlocking a door and starting a coffee machine. So these guys in Brooklyn have their apartment wired, so when they check into their apartment, it unlocks their apartment and it starts their coffee machine. Amazing. <laughs> there we go. I won't go into that. Thanks. Thanks.